What's good? What's up? It's your man Rico. Rico the Opinionist. What's going on, everybody? This is going to be a quick video. It's just something uh, that was on my mind. Y'all know, uh, first of all, like, share, and subscribe. I'm up to 445 uh, subscribers. Thank y'all so much. We're almost getting there at 500. And I'm telling you, when we get to 1500, I'll be doing, you know, live no podcast. We can sit and chat. And I can do my thing and take your calls or your links. You know, drop the link in the in the chat and we can talk. Uh, but anyway, you no, know, during Labor Day, this is it's a video I've been meaning to do for the past few days. And um, Labor Day was it Sunday before Labor Day, so it had to be today's. Yeah, and so I was, you know, doing laundry. So I guess they had to be the third. They're on the third. What's this like the? Damn, it's 11, so I meant to do this a week ago. But it was still fresh on my mind. I was doing laundry, and you know how you're sitting in there just waiting for your clothes to hit the spin cycle so you can chuck them in the dryer? I scroll scrolling through you know, YouTube, and I'd be damn, I thought about, well, I came across the Straight Outta Compton CD or album, whatever it was in 89. And, of course, when I was you know, 19 years old, 20, 18, 19, when they, when they, when the album came out, when the album came out, and, you know, of course, it took the world by storm because politically it was talking about how the cops in that, in LA were just so racist and horrible to inner city blacks. And I guess they were doing a Hispanics wrong, but they didn't, they didn't do the CD, some black dudes did. Uh, and all of these men would eventually come from that N.W.A. album, that debut, uh, Legends of Hip Hop, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy E, Yellow Boy, Ren, MC Ren, all of them became you no know, icons in hip hop. But see, at this at that time, you know, you young, you just bob your head to the music, and and um, you're hearing all the stuff that's going on on television when. The FBI and, and of course, white America mad because he said F the police. And here we are today. Uh, that same chant is probably still need to be said. The way these cops putting their knee in people's necks, choking out black dudes, shooting them in the head when their arms up, Mike Brown. They're doing all kinds of stuff mysteriously. Uh, black men are coming up missing. You know, oh, they've been showing their ass. But it was that 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 CD right there, in this new in this new era, before uh, the days of the Crisis magazine and very and Jet magazine and showing the the brutality of police officers of black men and black people in the, in in black neighborhoods can't even call it the, the the inner city, but just what happened happened, you know, NWA sent out the call F the police and I and I listened to the entire CD and man let me tell y'all something God oh, I'm 54 now and man that shit is epic that is an epic CD straight out of Compton if you have not listened to it if you're 50 or 45 and up and you and you remember when NWA man shook the country up with that song and gangster gangster left right left you two flares goddamn the ruthless you know all of that and strawberry the dope man dope man and gangster what does uh oh shit all of it I listened to all of them and it brought back so many memories of my youth but it was the power of those songs now this is 1988 1989 and and I know just like in like in late like 79 80 they didn't have all the technology uh for doing vignettes and and the mixing but what stood out the most for me for that album that CD of course Ice Cube's thunderous thunderous lyrics across those heavy beats. There was a lot of bass and a lot of beats. That damn Dr. Dre and Yellow Boy, but of course Dr. Dre. 
Man, that, that was serious. I'm, I want to challenge y'all to go back and listen to that CD. And with, no, with the intelligence that you have today at 50 or 45, go back and listen to it. If you weren't privy enough to really pay attention to it, you just kind of bob your head to the beat. But the political commentary, the social commentary, the, uh, you know, the, the intimate commentary of the CD, they're still talking about the same stuff. Uh, the same stuff that uh, that we're talking about now, those brothers will put that sound the alarm. They sound, sound, they sound the alarm then. And uh, <clears throat> that damn ice cube was serious. MC Ren wasn't no joke. It was just in the beats of Dr. Dre and Yella. It was just, that was a perfect combination for a, a hip hop group. And I'm going to give them hip hop because if it was just the scratching and the mixing. That shit was awesome. And I bobbed my head and I'm like, damn. Boo -doo 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 -doo. That out of Compton, the crazy motherfucking they eat. And that ice cube and, and, and make you want to go back and watch the video with a whole new appreciation. And when you see things that are going on now with, with, with black Americans and their relationship with the police and black men, black males and their relationship with the police, man, that damn CD was on time. And something else I noticed without no in addition to the masterful lyrics of Ice Cube and the masterful, masterful beats of Dre and the smooth lyricism of MC Ran and the and uh and the <laughs> look and the bodyguard like lyrics of Easy. -E. Look, what was so awesome about that damn CD is I listened to it in my adult mind. My my adult mind has got at least four college degrees behind it and, and 26 years of in my profession as a social worker and, and, and one who's always having conversations about things that are going on around us. In this mind, not my 19 year mind, I'm telling you, that damn say, CD was epic. Preeminent. And, and you know, they had the same custom, but, you know, in the, um, can I talk about the beats again? Hold on a second. Can I talk about the mastery? Of, hold on again. I'm knowing what's going on. See, when, when you know, when God, gets, you know what they say. You know, when truth is spoken, the devil gets busy. Come on, somebody. And so, I was just listening to the gist of y'all put put in your headphones. Just, just, and it's the scratching for me, and the mixing, and the in the vignettes, and the acting. Get on the goddamn ground, shut to get your black ass, you know. The, no, they're mimicking the cops talking trash. And uh and all of the, all of the songs are just just very, very good. Well done, well produced. For 1989. That's a damn and, and the and the beats were so clear and just and and and, and this is where I'm going. Uh yeah, they, they was hollering bitches and fuck you, bitch, and but you know what I didn't hear very much of? It was there. Why I say these young guys that's rapping today and all this crap they're talking about, these dudes today are some pussies compared to those four gentlemen. And, let me see. Dre, Ren, Easy, Ice Cube, Yellow Boy. Five. Compared to those five dudes. And, uh, and, 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 and can I shout out to a spinoff from them? Shout out to DOC. I'm the doctor. Do 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 do. What the what up, what the fuck? I don't know. I never knew what that was. But shout out to the DOC, by the way. That he was a damn an extraordinary producer, hip hop producer. That dude was good. Probably still is. I just haven't heard any new stuff from. Him. But shout out to DOC. I love that dude too. When, when the songs he got to do before his nose accident and stuff. But um. And this is the King of Soul, Otis Redding. I just thought I'd let y'all see my t-shirt. Otis Redding's, Otis Redding's awesome, man. Stacks Records, Memphis, come on, somebody. Uh, but, did what these little dudes are talking about? Mm -mm. No way. You know, they don't have really any social commentary and a lot of that stuff. And one thing I noticed about that CD, that uh, Straight Outta Compton CD, you didn't hear about them gratuitously uh, callously 
murdering other black men. You don't hear them talking about black men murdering and killing them. Now, they always say, keep your guard on you, keep your Glock on you, because, you know, you can't you know just in case. But it never said going out, born an N-word, here, killing the N-word, and I'm searching for N-words. They never, they never talked about that. You know what they talked about? The system, how it's attacking them and attacking us. But these little pussy-ass tight jeans split in the thighs, um... I just want to rock, rock, rock. I just want to rock ass little dudes today. Uh-uh. There's some lames. These little rappers today are lames. They, they didn't talk. If they talk mention drugs, it was weed. Even in Dope Man, Dope Man, they mentioned the drug of the day, which was crack. They had a song uh, talking about the neighborhood strawberry. What we call crackheads here in the South and all everywhere else. <laughs> And then, you know, these dudes today, they don't have a clue about what talking about social commentary is about. And, and, the, and the voices of those guys back then were strong and it was very masculine. They, they sounded like men when they roared across the mic. These young fellas today, their pants too tight. They're carrying women's purses and talking about, talking about tough shit against other blacks. That's why I can't hardly connect with these dudes. You know, they 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 wear feminine clothes. These are rappers, tough so-called gangster rappers. They wear feminine clothes, they carry women's purses, uh, tattoos all over. You no, know, like chicks. N.W.A. one with none of that. Those are some real dudes. You know, they were kind of do like, hey, no star, there won't be none. But we just just in case, so I'm gonna be packing because you don't catch me lacking. And you know, as a young man listening to that, like I, I get it. But they didn't start anything. These dudes talking about running up on folks, talking about robbing people out. The only blacks. They only talk about murdering and hurting other blacks. They don't talk about hurt, hate no Jews, hurting no Hispanics, hating no, no, unless I guess you live in Compton and the Mexicans and Hispanics out there. But as a group, no. White women, white men, they don't talk about hurting none of them and running up on them and doing none of that. And so, I, no, it's so many stories, so many meanings I can come out and get out of that, that city, uh, straight out of Compton. It was, it was, a, uh, it was just, it was like a reintroduction. And I said, you know what? <laughs> this NWA CD, that's what these little bastards need to be pumping. And I know it's rough, but it's masculine. Did y'all hear me? That's a masculine album. Now, the feminists and the beta male simps we know it's hyper masculinity hyper sexuality you know, we're not dealing with that they rap like men and one thing about it, they ain't let chicks talk shit to them either they rap like men and they they were very masculine in their delivery these little punks they she fell the streets of devil devil you know they act like they scared to speak up in their raps can't even, they, they call it mumble rap. I just call it almost like step and fetch rap. It's almost like step and fetch rap. I just don't know what the water cold, Missy. I, I just don't know. That's, that's how they sound. No masculinity in none of these little punk ass rappers. So I want to tell all, all your favorite rappers, local here in Dallas, local in Memphis, local in Chicago, local, they need to put on that straight out of Compton CD and listen to what, how men sound. How they got bass. MC Ren and Ice Cube had thunderous bass in their voice. Cochise, B Mario, what's up, Ivan? What's good? I know you know what I'm talking about. Those dudes rap like men. They were young men, 19 years old, 18, 20 years old. So they let you know they come from somewhere and they was talking about it. They weren't talking about the, the black dudes who was getting a problem. They were talking about the damn police and the system. These little soft Kotec tampon wearing tight clothes, tight boots, uh, pierced nose and, and nostrils and lips and eyes have little bastards, skirts and, and blouses wearing little so called tough ass rapper dudes. Who can take them seriously? <laughs> and Ice Cube, one thing about them, they like, man, gangsters don't dance. These some dancing silhouette ballet dancing little fuckers that y'all, they're supposed to be the new rappers of the day. You know, I don't need nobody to be extra tough, but at least look like a man. These little motherfuckers here. 
that's going on today. And they so tough. First thing they do is pull out a pistol. When Ice Cube and them was talking about, they said, left, right, left. God damn you, toothless. What he said, no, left, right, left. Damn you, toothless. God damn, we're ruthless. He was throwing these bees on them. That's what they talked about. No, they didn't. They didn't talk like that against other. Uh, they probably talked about other neighborhoods, but y'all get it. They weren't perfect, but it's a lot better than this foolishness that's going on now. Cause all these dudes talk about. It's hurting other black men, destroying other black neighborhoods. That's what they do because that's what they're paid to do. Ice Cube and them were not wanted because they were talking about people protecting themselves against rogue and crooked-ass cops in Compton and all parts of California. And by the way, while I'm talking about the era, shout out to DJ Quick, by the way, because I listened to that uh, Quick is the Name CD. Pretty good. I remember that when I was at Grambling, listening to uh, Black P and... And uh, just like, let me see, just like Compton came out later. But that first album, y'all know what I'm talking about. Run and raise in Compton. Yeah, that, man. I think my, uh, yeah, my sophomore year or something, man, playing the, the tape off that damn thing. But yeah, that's, that's. And nobody got hurt in DJ Quick stuff, too. He talked about a bunch of gang shit, but, you know. But anyway, y'all, I just want to share my thoughts that I just I just listened to that CD. And, uh, you know, I might go back and listen to some more. I might go... I need to go back and listen to Hammer's Let's Get It Started. I enjoyed that damn album. He was out. When Hammer was out, Hammer was the bomb. People hated on Hammer, too. Hammer, Hammer employed more people than any rapper they ever did back then. Yeah, they put everybody to work. They were hating on Hammer. No, he won the lyricist. He's an entertainer. He rap, lyrics, music. He used a lot of remix of old soul songs, R&B songs. He killed it. So y'all give y'all need that on BET Awards, the BT Honors, and all the Bounce Awards, Black Music Awards. Y'all need to honor MC Hammer. MC Hammer was awesome. Was awesome. But again, I'm gonna end by saying shout out to NWA. They were a solid, solid act. And I wish a lot of these young men could take notes. And to hear what men sounded like on rap, you know, on the West Coast. What men sounded like. We had, we also had the East Coast brothers, you know, you know Big Daddy Kane and all of them doing their thing. And uh, who else is out there? Uh, uh, Eric, what's that? Eric B for President CD. Eric B and Rakim and all of them. There's some other. Those guys sounded like men. But you cast a day. Y'all sound like a. I'm, not, I'm, I'm done talking about y'all little sorry ass. I'm not impressed with these little cats. Uh, but anyway, uh, some of the beats are cool, but you no, know, far as them as people, they all you know most of them are single mother raised and grandma baby and shit. And that's what they sound like. So, which is cool, the beats. But they, but they, they dress, they're, they're too effeminate. Too effeminate. Y'all be cool. It's your man Rico, the opinionist. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace, y'all.